the mark of a civilised society is how it treats the most vulnerable people. So we have to challenge, to demand change, and then to secure change. Now, our NHS is the envy of the world, and rightly so. The Commonwealth Fund last year concluded that it was the best system in the world for equity and for quality. And as Liberal Democrats, we will always champion the NHS, and we will always do what it takes to secure its future and the investment that it needs. But true friends of the NHS must also confront those areas where it falls short. That is the way we make it even better. That is the way we maintain public confidence. Now, when I met Sarah, she told me of the tragic story of her son, Connor, who died in an assessment and treatment center in Oxford. An independent inquiry found that Connor's death could have been prevented. Staff had failed to use his parents' knowledge of his condition to make sure he was cared for safely. And not enough effort was made to understand Connor's needs as an individual, a person in his own right. His mother has ever since brilliantly campaigned for change, for a positive legacy for Connor, or laughing boy, as he was known. So we have worked with Sarah and her campaign team. I felt it was my responsibility to listen to them and to act. But Connor's case is sadly not unique. Too many families have told me that they felt completely ignored that no one was listening. Now, as a minister, I've made it my business to talk to families and to patients, to look myself at cases where the system has failed. For years, this has been going on, unchallenged and ignored. But now, Liberal Democrats in government have said no more. And so, just over a week ago, I published proposals in a green paper to fundamentally transfer power away from institutions and to people, to give people the right to challenge a decision, to place them in an institution, to give people the right to a personal budget so that they and their families are in control, to make certain that the Mental Health Act can't be used as an excuse to exclude families. So we will end once and for all the scandal of people with learning disability, those with autism and those with severe and enduring mental ill health having their fundamental rights ignored. And we will change the law. The Green Paper paves the way for a Connors law in the next Parliament. Now, Cat Cormac talked movingly about what it was like to be placed in a police cell as a teenager as a result of a mental health crisis. The sense of shame, the first person in her family to ever experience that. But she was ill, not a criminal. How can we do this to people? It was stories like this that led me to propose setting standards in mental health crisis care for the first time. There is a moral imperative for change. So last year we published the Crisis Care Concordat. The Concordat is clear that no under 18 year old should be placed in a police cell because of a mental health crisis. This year, numbers are down by nearly a third. We set the objective of cutting the number of adults in police cells by 50% in two years, and we're nearly there. The Concordat has initiated brilliant collaboration across England between police uh, and mental health services. Mental health nurses working with the police, making much better use of the resources, but crucially delivering better care. Now we must go one step further and ban completely the use of uh, police cells for under 18s completely.
and Liberal Democrats will do just that. It will be in our manifesto. Now, the treatment of eating disorders is another area where too many families and teenagers are let down, and always have been. There was a girl in my constituency, Charlotte Robinson. She was 17, clever, hard-working, well-liked, a life full of opportunities ahead of her. She planned to study at Cambridge University when she left school. And as she was working towards her A-levels, she started to suffer from an eating disorder. Her family asked for help. Uh, then they waited, and they waited, and they waited. In the summer after she'd finished her exams, she was admitted to hospital. Charlotte was dangerously ill, and a few days later she died. The next day, her A-level results arrived, straight A's. This would not happen with suspected cancer. Her parents have brilliantly campaigned ever since. Eating disorders can kill, and too often they do kill. And here in Britain, they affect 1.6 million people per year. And Nick Clegg has now secured £150 million over the next five years to make sure that every area has access to high-quality eating disorder services. You can imagine just what this means to so many families in our country. And we also plan to introduce a maxim, maximum waiting time uh, standard for access to treatment in eating disorders in 2016, just as we have already done for early intervention in psychosis. Now, children and young people's mental health services are in desperate need of modernisation. Access is poor. Brilliant people working in these services are let down by fragmented commissioning and underinvestment. And there's not nearly enough focus on intervening early, preventing a deterioration of health. So last summer, I set up a task force to come up with proposals for change. Crucially, we've listened to the views of young people about what they want. And on Tuesday, we will publish the final report, setting out a blueprint for the future of young people's mental health services. And thanks to Liberal Democrats in government, we now have the money to achieve this. The Deputy Prime Minister has announced that we will invest over a billion pounds over the next five years to make this change a reality. Now, in all these cases, the common theme is of people, young and old, very disadvantaged people, being denied their basic rights, being disadvantaged by the system, denied opportunity, denied the ability to flourish as individuals, unable to enjoy a good life, like the rest of us take for granted. These are the people that, as Liberal Democrats, we must fight for. We are all campaigners. We take that into government. We will always stand up for people. We won't cover up poor care or discrimination. We will demand change, and we have delivered change. In this parliament, access to eating disorders therapies have massively increased. New investment means that 2.6 million more people have received talking therapies during the course of this parliament. And this has happened because of Liberal Democrats in government. A world-leading new service to divert people with mental ill health away from the criminal justice system being rolled out across the country because of Liberal Democrats in government and the first ever waiting time standards in mental health from April of this year, ending the outrageous exclusion of those suffering mental ill health from the right to treatment at the appropriate time.
and with a commitment to apply these standards across mental health over the next five years because of Liberal Democrats in government. The moral case for change is overwhelming, but also, you know, the economic case. There's a wealth of evidence that investing in mental health, treating those with learning disability or with autism, with dignity, respecting their rights, actually gives you a return on your investment. Liberal Democrats will invest £500 million extra each year in mental health. And we will commit to meeting the funding shortfall of £8 billion in the NHS by 2020. No other party has done that. The public does not want the NHS to be used as a political football. So today I'm renewing my call for all parties to come together and agree how we can protect health and care for the future, whoever is in government. All parties need to work together for the good of our NHS. That's not too much to ask. So Liberal Democrats, as we head towards the election campaign, we must hold our heads high. We should be proud of what we have done in government, fighting for equality for those suffering mental ill health, giving opportunity to children from the poorest backgrounds with the pupil premium, taking the poorest out of income tax altogether. So much reforming zeal in this parliament has come from the Liberal Democrats. Still a long way to go, still so much more to do to make our country fairer for our children and our grandchildren. Once again, the Liberal Democrats will put the national interest first and ensure that Britain continues on a path to a stronger economy and, crucially, a fairer society. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.